Uh, today is a first time community moment presenter. We're so glad she's willing to share with us today. Let's give a warm welcome to Kim Kissel. Anything stupid as a teenager. <laughs> How many got caught? <laughs> okay, well, I am a teacher. I teach high school science. Right now, I'm at a disciplinary alternative school. Most people go, ooh. But I taught in the juvenile correctional facility for two years. So my job right now is a cakewalk in comparison. <laughs> So, um, people kind of ask you, what was it like, man? And I'm like, you wouldn't believe half the stories I told you? <laughs> um, so, I had the worst of the worst. You know, I know teachers all have students that, you know, it's, their day's a little easier when that student's not there, but now imagine putting all those students in one classroom. There was not a whole lot of teaching going on at the facility I was at because of the way it was set up and it was a little crazy, but the students that I taught were the ones that really didn't see any point in education. A lot of them hadn't been at school regularly since they were in second or third grade. A lot of them had second, third grade reading levels, math levels. It's a little hard to teach you science whenever you can't you know, add, subtract, multiply, divide. Another thing that was a challenge to me was the fact that they'll want you to know what they did because respect was a big thing. And their street cred was, hey, I did this. And my philosophy was, I don't need or want to know why you're here. If I know that you say, raped your five-year-old sister once I know that, I can't unknow that. And if I have to treat you professionally, don't tell me these things. But um, I was in the state juvenile correctional system. Um, it used to be called Texas Youth Commission. Now it's Texas Juvenile Justice Department. And I taught there uh, one facility for two years, another facility for another year. And when I went through my training, it was really difficult because you have to think like a criminal to understand. Like all the time they're like, don't you know, leave this thing around. I'm like, why on earth not? And then I learned, oh, um, my, I've kind of gotten out of the habit, but my pen was always on my lanyard. I never set the pen down because the pens would be taken up and the ink would be used for tattoos. And let me tell you, Prison tattoos made by teenagers, awesome. <laughs> There's one kid we called Doodle Pad because he had like a paper airplane and some other stuff on his elbow. We were like, how did that happen? At the school, it was, the school day was not, they, they didn't care about the education part. It was a training post, it was social hour, it was, everything but learning and because of their age they were scheduled into high school classes I said doesn't matter when the last time they went to school was oh you're 17 you are in biology until you pass well what was the point in trying to start getting your high school credits if you're 17 and just starting out high school you're only going to be there for a couple months and you're not going back to school whenever you get out so why try? It was also a challenge because it was all boys at this facility. There's a separate facility for girls. And every time someone new comes in, which is practically a daily thing, you have to reestablish the pecking order. So there was a lot of, let's see who's the boss now. And another really difficult part was that I felt like I was being treated as a criminal sometimes. Every morning going into work, it was like going through airport security. I couldn't take my lunch in except if it was in a one gallon plastic Ziploc bag or a see-through box. And, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm, you pay me to be here, what? So you had to make sure they're a few minutes early to make sure they won the line through security. Um, another thing about 
feeling like being treated like a criminal. A lot of these boys had nothing to do but sit around and think of ways to cause trouble. I was under official investigation because someone saw the waistband of my underwear. Of course, the story got embellished, and but I mean, they have to take these allegations seriously because they're minors and there's some stuff going on that's not <coughs> above board, but it was, I can laugh about it now, but it was honestly really scary at the time because there are cameras all over the facility. There were three cameras in each of my classrooms. And I know there's talk about cameras like in special ed classrooms, and I can see both sides of it. I can see if you're doing your job, there's nothing to worry about. They're there to back you up. But there's no sound. And also, if you've ever had to try to remember details exactly, especially if it's a stressful situation. There were, were, when anything happened, we had to fill out an incident report, and it's a legal document, and it could be you just broke up a fight in your classroom, and you're still on adrenaline, and you're like, and they're asking you to watch the class who's all riled up because of all the excitement that just happened, and you have to remember these details, and you're still freaking out, but you have to get this in a timely fashion down to security people. And let me tell you, if you think you know what's going on in the classroom, yeah, I hated looking at the cameras because there's all sorts of stuff going on that you have no idea what's going on. It's pretty rough. Um, another thing, the school I'm at right now I would say probably about 75% of the kids are there for having drugs at school or being under the influence at school. And I hear the kids say, why do they put us all together? We just come out here with better connections than we, we had when we went in. Same thing with the correctional facilities. You've got all across the board offenses, and then they're just learning from each other how to be better criminals. It doesn't make much sense to me. Now, these students are, they don't have a whole lot of hope in their lives because a lot of them have a lot of family members that are in prison or dead. They don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. We try to do things with um, vocational training, you know, GED training. But the problem is the time frame that they're there, usually it was nine months was the minimum sentence, but Right now, the rule is when they turn 19, they age out. But it used to be 21. And there was a young man that was there for most of the time I was there. He turned 21 towards the end of uh, my, my time there. And he had been in since he was 14. Now, imagine what you were like at 14, and then you were 21. How much? development there is in that time. Imagine trying to do that in a correctional facility. You know, he hadn't been off the, you know, half mile square property in seven years. That's crazy to me. As far as consequences go, that was rough. I mean, I don't know, I don't know what the solution is because they're already locked up. What are you going to do to them? Oh, I'm sorry, you can't have your snack today. Isn't that how we treat three and four year olds? Um, I remember one time I'm trying to put a little bit of humor in here so it's not a complete downer. <laughs> there was a guy that would routinely get up on the roof just to cause disruption. And someone was like, well, why is he on the roof today? And I just popped off with, oh, his graham crackers were broken yesterday. The other person thought I was serious because it was as likely an explanation as any other one we'd ever heard for why he was up on the roof. Because all movement had to shut down whenever someone was out of bounds. So, it was definitely an interesting experience. Um, 
I did my student teaching down in Clear Lake in, in League City. Then I had my first three years of teaching in Acres Home. Anyone familiar with Acres Home? That was a bit of a culture shock. Um, I remember for my first year of teaching, we had to put together this professional development binder, and it had to include like our philosophy of education. So I'm like, oh, I wrote one of those in college, and I pulled it up. And then a little file off to the right from the educational philosophy paper was my weekly journal from my student teaching. And totally different world, and I remember, I looked at it and said, I'm not gonna read that because I'm either gonna laugh or I'm gonna cry, and it's probably cry because they won't tuck in their shirts. What do I do? <laughs> Lord, if that was my biggest problem with the schools I've been at since then. Totally different thing. And um, it was, I, 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 I'm kind of glad I had that time. It kind of makes me appreciate the, the job I have now, which is still challenging by most people's standards, but I think I've, I've, I've come out better for the other side. It was just, it, it, my, my coworkers and I have a really strong bond. It's like in those movies when you go through that really horrendous experience and everyone's, or people fall in love or whatever, that was not the case, but we've, we've built a pretty strong bond. And again, so this isn't a complete downer. I will tell you my favorite teaching story. This is at the school I'm at now. I have all these old science gadgets all over the room, and but one of the rules on the wall is if you don't know what it is, don't touch it. And one of the kids picked up one of those Galileo thermometers. What's this, miss? Please put it down, it's fragile. And I gave him the lecture about, if you don't know what it is, don't touch it. Not three minutes later, over by the door, I have all sorts of critters in my classroom, and this particular, on the bookshelf, there was those Madagascar hissing cockroaches. But you feed them dog food or cat food, basically. Had a little container that used to have hummus in it, and it was sitting by the roach cage. And over by the door, same kid I just fussed at. Man, that hummus tastes terrible. Uh, I looked at him and said, dude, you just ate cat food. No, uh, it says hummus. I'm like, clearly you don't know what hummus is, but I would think you'd be able to identify cat kibble. So. Anyway, I just thought I'd leave on a funny note.